house day that he's going to tell us for us and I think there's two of us. We're on. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I checked you on too soon, sorry. You'll have to eliminate it. Anyhow, well, good day and welcome to Reading Through the Bible in a Year. I'm Eric. And I'm Linda. And this is day 341. And we're reading in Daniel in the Old Testament, chapters four, 5, 6, and 7, pardon me. And in the New Testament, we're reading 2nd John. Second John's only one chapter in the whole book. I guess so, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, well, that's a short one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who read first last night? I did. So I guess then you pray, pray. and I'll read. Okay. Gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this opportunity to read your word. We pray, Lord, that your blessing be upon all those who join in with us as they read the word too. And may the word be nourishment to their hearts and joy to them too Lord. and we thank you in jesus name amen, amen. okay chapter I'll, five i'll sit back while you're reading the lap. king the lap. belshazzar made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in front of the thousands belshazzar when he tasted the wine commanded that the vessel of gold and the silver which nebuchadnezzar his father had taken out of the temple of jerusalem be brought that the king might and his lords, and his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought in the golden and the silver vessels, which had been taken out of the temple, the house of God of Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine, and they praised the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron and wood and stone. In other words, they used God's instruments to praise idols. Verse 5. Mm. My turn to read? I was Your just relaxing here. I know. <clears throat> Suddenly, the fingers of a man's hand emerged and began writing opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the, the back of the hand that did the writing. Then the king's face grew pale, and his thoughts alarmed him, and his hips, hip joints went slack, and his knees began knocking together. The king called aloud to bring in the conjurers, the Chaldeans, and the diviners. The king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon, Any man who can read this inscription and explain its interpretation to me will be clothed with purple and have a necklace of gold around his neck and have authority as third ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the inscription or make known its interpretation to the king. Then King Belshazzar was greatly alarmed. His face grew even paler, and his nobles were perplexed. Verse 10. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet hall. And the queen said, O king, live forever. Let not your thoughts alarm you or your color change. There is in the, your kingdom a man in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your fathers, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, made him chief of the magicians, the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the astrologers, because an excellent spirit of knowledge and understanding to interpret dreams and explain riddles and solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Bath Bathasha. How do you pronounce his name? Belteshazzar. 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 Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Verse 13. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the exiles from Judah, who, whom my father the king brought from Judah? Now I have heard about you that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that illumination, insight, and extraordinary wisdom have been found in you. Just now, the wise men and the conjurers were brought in before you that they might read this inscription and make its interpretation known to me, but they could not declare the interpretation of the message. But I personally have heard about you, that you're able to give interpretations and solve difficult problems. Now, if you're able to read the inscriptions and make this interpretation known to me, you will be clothed with purple and wear a necklace of gold around your neck, and you will have authority as the third ruler in the kingdom. Verse 17. Then Daniel answered before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself, 
and give you rewards to another. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O oh. oh, king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father kingship and greatness and glory and majesty and because of the greatness that he gave him all people nations and languages trembled and feared before him whom he would whom he would he slew and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he raised up and whom he would he put down but when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he didn't so that he dealt proudly he was deposed from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him he was driven from among men and his mind was laid like that of a great beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses he was fed grass like an ox and his body was wet with the dew from the heaven until he knew that the most high god ruled the kingdom of man and set over it whom he will and you his son belshazzar have not humbled your heart though you knew all this but you have lifted up yourself against the lord of heaven and the vessels of his house have been brought in before you and you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them and you have praised the gods of silver gold and bronze and iron and wood and stone which do not see or hear or know but the god in whose hand is your breath and who are all your ways you have not honored verse 24 then the hand was sent from him, and this inscription was written out. Now this is the inscription that was written out. Menna, Menna, Tekel, Ufersen. I guess so. This is the interpretation of the meaning. Menen, God has numbered your kingdom and put an end to it. Teka, you have been weighed on the scales and found deficient. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given over to the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar gave orders and they clothed David with purple and put a necklace of gold around his neck and issued a proclamation concerning him that he now had authority as the third ruler in the kingdom. That same night, Belshazzar the Chaldean king was slain. So Darius, the Medes, received the kingdom at about the age of 62. Hmm. Chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 star satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom. And over them were three presidents, of whom Daniel was one, to whom these star traps should give account, so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguish above all the other presidents and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom then the presidents and the satraps sought to find grounds for complaint against daniel with regard to the kingdom but they could find no grounds for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him then these men said, We shall not find any grounds for complaint against this Daniel unless we find in our connections with the law of his God. Verse 6. Then these commissioners and satraps came by agreement to the king and spoke to him as follows. King Darius, live forever. All the commissioners of the kingdom, the prefects, the satraps, the high officials, and the governors have consulted together that the king should establish a statute and enforce an injunction that anyone who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for thirty days shall be cast into the lion's den. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it may not be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which may not be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document, that is, the injunction. Then Daniel knew that the document had been signed, and he went in his house where he had windows in the upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. And he got sat down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he had done previously. Then these men came in agreement and found Daniel making petition and supplication before his God. 
And they came near and said before the king concerning the indict, The O king, did you not sign an interdict that any man who makes petition to any god or man within thirty days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered before the king, That Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no heed to you, O king, or to the interdict you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Verse 14. Then as soon as the king heard this statement, he was deeply depressed, distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And even until sunset, he kept exerting himself to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Recognize, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no injunction or statute which the king established may be changed. Verse 16. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king said to Daniel, May your God whom you serve continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of the lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No di um, diversion was brought to him, and slept fled from him. Verse 19. Then the king arose with the dawn at the break of day, and went in haste to the lion's den. And we had come near the den to lion, he cried out, or then to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you constantly serve been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have no har not harmed me, inasmuch as I was found innocent before him, and also towards you, O king. I have committed no crime. Then the king was very pleased and gave orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no injury whatever was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. The king then gave orders, and they brought those men who had maliciously accused Daniel, and they cast them, the children and their wives, into the lion's den, and they had not reached and they had not reached the bottom of the den before the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. It's very sad that the wife and kids had to suffer because the husbands made bad decisions. That's not fair. Verse 25. I know. Then the I know king Darius thing. wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwelt in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions, so this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Chapter 7. Vision of the Four Beasts. Oh, time. Oh, getting on. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw dreams and visions in his mind as he lay on his bed. Then he wrote the, dreams, the dream down and related the following summary of it. Daniel said, I was looking in my vision by night. And behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts were coming up from the sea, different from each other. The first was like a lion and had the wings of an e eagle. I kept looking until its wings were plucked, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man. A human mind also was given to him. And behold, another beast, a second one, resembling a bear, and it was raised up on one side, and the three ribs were in its mouth between its teeth. And thus they said to it, Arise, devour much meat. After this I kept looking, and behold, another one, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. And the beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I kept looking in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadfully strong, 
and it had large iron teeth. It devoured and crushed and trampled down the remainder with its feet, and it was difficult or different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. While I was contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them, and three of the first horns were pulled out by the roots before it. And behold, the horn pressed eyes, possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth uttering great boasts. Verse 9. Hmm. Verse 9. Chapter 7. Okay. No, I was checking that computer and then I wiggled it and I lost my space and I was trying to find the spot when you said verse one. My numbers were really okay. As I looked, throng, thrones were placed and one that was the ancient days looked like it's his seat. His red and raiment was a white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came from from before him a thousand thousand served him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the court sat in judgment and the books were opened and I looked in there because of the sound of the great words which the horn was speaking and I looked and the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire and as for the rest of the beast their dominion was taken away but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And I saw in the night vision, and behold, that the clouds of the heavens there came out like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days, and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, and glory, and kingdom, and all peoples, nations, and languages should save him, so should serve him. Pardon me. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious, and the vision in my head alarmed me, and I approached one of those who stood there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me, and made, told, made it known to me the interpretation of these things. These great beasts, which are four in number, are four kings who will rise from the earth, but the saints of the highest one will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, for all ages to come. Then I desired to know the exact meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its claws of bronze, and which devoured, crushed, and trampled down the remainder with its feet, and the meaning of the ten horns that were in its head, and the other horn which came up, and before that which three of the horns fell, namely, that horn which had eyes and the mouth uttering great boasts, and which was larger in appearance than its associates. I kept looking, and that horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them, until the Ancient of Day came, and judgment was passed on in favor of the saints of the high, highest one. And the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. Thus he said, the four beasts will be the fourth. The fourth beast will be the fourth kingdom on the earth, which will be different from all the other kingdoms. And they will devour the whole earth and tread it down and crush it. As for the ten horns out of this kingdom, ten kings will rise, and another will rise after them. And he will be different from the previous ones, and will subdue three kings. And he will speak out against the Most High, and wear down the saints of the highest one. And he will intend to make alterations in times and in law, and they will be given into his hand for a time, times and a half time. But the court will set for judgment, will sit for judgment, and his dominion will be taken away, annihilated, and destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole earth will be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions will serve and obey him. At this point, the revelation ended. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts were greatly alarmed. Me and my face grew pale, but I kept the matter to myself. Okay, now we turn quickly to John in the New Testament because our time is just about up. We're going to read the whole book of Second Letter of John. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not only I, but also who know the truth, because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, peace be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son in truth and in love. I rejoice 
greatly to find some of your children following the truth, just as we have been commanded by the Father. And now I beg you, lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another, and this is love, that we follow his commandments. This is the commandment, as you have heard from the beginning, that you follow love. For many deceived deceivers have gone out into the world, men who will not acknowledge the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such is one, such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Look to yourself, that you may not lose what you have worked for, but may win a full reward. Aim anyone who does who goes ahead and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine has both the Father and the Son. And if anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not re receive him into the house or give him any greeting. For he who greets him shares his wicked work. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. But I hope to come to see you and to talk with you face to face, so that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister greet you. And that's the end of our reading for today. Thank you for joining us. Much to think about. Bye for now. Yeah, let's discuss some of this. I have some things I want to say or ask. Okay.